get to see, you know, what a person's made of, you know, in those tough times, because winning's easy, but losing is when you see the true character come out. Hello, and welcome to Matt Dunnigan, His Story. This show is brought to you by the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. I'm Charles de Saint Marie, and I'll be your host for the next 30 minutes. Traditions in the CFL can typify a football team throughout its entire history. In Edmonton, at the position of quarterback, it is the lineage of the great warriors that is evident. Names like Parker, Wilkinson, Moon, Ham, and Allen come to mind. And then there's the quarterback who battled anyone who separated him from his goal to win. Matt Dunnigan is that warrior. He is battle-worn, tried and tested, and yet he refused to surrender as he continued to fight and bleed to the very end. You're playing football. You shed the label of quarterback and you, and you play a football player and you do whatever it takes to get the job done. And that's my mentality. Not again, quick drop, looks to throw. He's gonna run, makes one defender miss. He's up to the 30, finally tackled at the 35. First down. That's the way I play the game. It's the only way, that's what I brought to the table. Takes the snap, five step drop. Oh, he slips, he gets up. He hurled a bomb downfield. It caught, caught at the 25 yard line. What a play by Donovan. Too often I see people um, bailing and changing colors in, the, in adversity and you know that's that's a true testament to somebody's character is when they sit in the fan how are you going to react third down game on the line they need six done again back to throw over the middle it's caught a leaping reception by smith the crowd goes wild everybody's pampered you know you need more blue collar guys you just want to bring the lunch pail to work every day and bust their tails be the same in good times and in bad he runs, he's hit hard, he's that's what I was willing to give. And uh, it's the way I saw the game as to how it should be played. And and I played it that way. It's like a punch drunk fighter. You know, you're gonna find your feet and you can't show a weakness. And uh, you know, that's the mentality. It was grounded into me since my days growing up in Ohio and and getting um, and getting schooled in you know in Texas and in the mindset of how to approach the game physically and mentally. And uh, yeah, that's just what you do, right? Grew up playing kill the guy with the ball in the front yard. You know, you run around throwing people over the bushes, into trees, you know, into the lamp posts, whatever, and you just play and kill the guy with the ball. Football was always part of the family. You know, growing up, going to the Cleveland Browns games, watching Bill Nelson, Leroy Kelly, and Paul Warfield watching the folks carting the liquor boxes, you know, the suitcases into the, into the Brown Stadium. It was, uh, you know, that's the way we rolled. That's the way we went to the football game. We moved to Dallas and uh, in the early 70s, and I believe it was 73, block and a half away from the Dallas Cowboy practice field. Walt Garrison lived out our cul-de-sac, up the street, take a right, he was four doors down. That's where Walt Garrison lived. And I still have a pair of his old cleats. And, uh, you know, cowboys were all over the place. My grandmother, who came and lived with us, after my grandfather passed away. Uh, Marie, she would always go up to Tom Thumb. She'd be hanging out with Two Tall Jones. Harvey Martin, she'd always come back and say she was talking to these guys. And it was just, they lived, the, I mean, Tom Thumb, and then there was the Cowboy practice field. So I was in, in an environment that was conducive to being associated with football. It was all around me. Ever since I was in the seventh grade, I knew that I wanted to uh, get an education through athletics. And uh, it was a focus of mine. And um, my folks worked hard to give us the things that we needed. And, uh, but I just knew that they couldn't afford to send me to university. So I had to help out in some way, shape, or form. So that was, uh, it was a focus of mine, was to get an education, free education through athletics, and it happened to be uh, football. Grew up throwing the ball at my mother, you know, and my dad. You know, my dad was working, and he's working. You know, I threw the ball at my mom a lot. And um, she will take the credit for teaching me how to throw. But I don't care who did. I just appreciate the, uh, you know, hands on the other end, because I like throwing whatever it was. 
right? Whether it was a rock, whether it was a baseball, snowball, basketball, I'm chunking it the length of the basketball court, just loving throwing. I was fairly decent at throwing. I just couldn't do anything else. I didn't have the size, didn't have the speed. I could just throw the football and take a workmanlike approach to the game, a mentality, a hard-nosed mentality from kill the guy with the ball and my folks, my mother, and uh, just growing up on Ohio, hotbed of football, Texas. Um, it was just a tremendous opportunity to uh, get that education. In Ohio, I wanted to be, you know, play for Woody. You know, I wanted to be a Buckeye, right? And, um, and then my dreams changed when I moved to Texas and I wanted to play for Daryl Royal in, at the University of Texas. Dunnigan, back to throw, sets up, fires, touchdown, Bulldogs! From the two-yard line, Dunnigan, short drop, fires to the back of the... I have no idea. Head scout my head down, trying to make it happen. I have no idea what's going on, really. Just can't even throw a spiral in warm-ups before games, you know. I'm just trying to, <laughs> trying to figure it all out. I had the good fortune of being involved with that team uh, before it was dismantled because I was taught so much from my teammates about how to approach the game professionally both on and off the football field. Uh, Warren Moon was not only making a name for himself um, in an Edmonton uniform, he was making a name for a race and he was also teaching me how to handle the game um, with grace and style both on and off the field. More importantly, off the field, because Warren didn't teach me many things on the field. He taught me the importance of composure off the field and giving time to everybody, which I already understood. But um, when I saw Warren and the success that he was having and how he handled himself with class, uh, I wanted to emulate um, him in so many different ways. Not only with his ability, he was 6'3", 220 plus, you know, through a beautiful spiral just about every time is deadly accurate and seemed to be uh, all the time composed uh, in the pocket no matter what was going on and so I want to emulate that for sure but more importantly I wanted to emulate him as a professional away from the game. It was good in the green and gold for five years. Hunnigan straight back from center, sets up in the pocket. He's firing, pitching deep into the end zone, touchdown, Eskimo. We're 8-8 eight and eight and 83. Hunnigan back, hit as he throws, launches it to the end zone, touchdown, Eskimo. Hunnigan dancing in the pocket, has a target, launching it deep into the Arnold secondary, caught on the fly, to the end zone, touchdown. Hunnigan back, launching it deep into the back of the end zone, a great open the shoulder grab, touchdown. And we got better the next year in 84. Dunnigan back pedal from center. He sets up. He's pitching deep. And the target wide wide open at the 30. Makes the catch. Get the 20. At the 10. Touchdown. Edmonton. Dunnigan hands on. Touchdown. Eskimo. We got better next year in 85. Scrambling, throwing it deep, looking down by midfield. That ball is caught. Great grab down to the 40. Our record continually got better. And we went to the Cup in '86, got thrashed by Hamilton. I think I was sacked 11 times that game. And my knee and my elbow operated on after that game. Donegan's up the He's hit as he releases the ball. Donegan is covered in the backfield. The ball comes loose. Donegan throws on the run. The ball is intercepted. And then '87, we win it. It 
was a tradition. It was a mindset that was passed down from one generation to the next and and uh, continually is. And, you know, that's could be in jeopardy this year for the first time in 34 years. But, you know, the fact is um, it's a tradition and a mindset. And you have to live up to those expectations and fill those shoes. And I was very fortunate to be taught by the best. And uh, that's never left me, never left me in my approach to the game today. Uh, BC was a it was a continuation of understanding what a professional football player is all about. You know, I knew I had the skills. Um, I knew I had the skills to to play the game. Dunnigan scrambling in the backfield, running right. Now he reverses field, being pursued by the Stampeders. Dunnigan on the move, throws on the run, throws into the end zone. It's a touchdown. BC life. What a play! Lions hand off. No wait, the fleet flicker back to Dunnigan. He picks the ball up. uniform did the same things that applied in the Edmonton Eskimo uniform and the consistency and the things that were necessary to be successful as a team both on and off the field all those things continued to apply and what I did was I took what I knew from being coming an Eskimo and being an Eskimo for five years took it to BC made it work there And uh, I learned that, hey, it didn't matter what color uniform. I was going to take the things I learned at Edmonton, take it wherever I went, and uh, approach it uh, like a professional, both on and off the field, get the guys together, make sure that we would live and die for each other, and uh, take a Warriors mentality out there and do whatever it takes to win. And, and uh, that was another uh, step forward in that understanding of what, was, what it's about to be a professional. It's August 2nd, 1996. I've been hit harder a hundred times, you know? And it's just, that day when I got hit, um, I fumbled the ball, got up, scrambled, and going for the ball, I got ear holed again, and I'm um, on the same play. But, and I was already out on my feet, I think, from a couple series before. This does not look good for Matt Dunnigan. Felt like for the first time in 27 years of playing the game, that my armor was just split wide open and it felt like I was exposed. And at that time, I didn't need six neurosurgeons and every other kind of doctor telling me that my career was over with. I knew it was over. That's where you're taught to tackle, right? You know, no, no grudges held there. I mean, he's doing his job. Yeah. And, uh, and who knows, I might have, I might have missed a read, you know, but. You never know, it's part of the game. I remember going down to the railing and getting a chance to see him, and it was like I saw his eyes were so totally different, and it was like he knew, I knew, this is not good. And this, you know, it was a hard thing to watch it go that way, and uh, the strides he's made, the steps he's made. That period of time, that next year, he wasn't putting together sentences, and you know, names and hard to see him that way. It was really hard to watch him lose his career that way. That was the most difficult year of my career uh, because I wasn't with my family. My family was back in Birmingham 
and uh, this happened and we okay stay in Birmingham you know we'll deal with this because this is kind of put a kink in the plans so the most difficult time of my football career I was away from my family not by their choice but just by circumstance and uh, you know I owe so much to John Hitchcock Rob Hitchcock's brother um, and uh, and Andrew Grigg these are my like uh, Tommy Gerhardt these are these are three guys that I leaned on in time of need when I was in Hamilton because I was spinning my head was spinning I wasn't think, thinking clearly obviously I couldn't even speak properly and uh, here the city was looking for uh, for answers to try to win football games on the football field and yet I couldn't even put two and two together and they were questioning my uh, resolve um, they were questioning whether or not um, you know I was able to come back if I wanted to come back you know it wasn't was it was just I wasn't right and uh, it was a difficult time but I never heard of it never heard of, uh, you know to fight back I've never heard it phrased that way and and there's nothing wrong with that um, it's just that I didn't see it as um, you know a, a battle to, to come back I, I just Okay, this is the cards that I've dealt, you know, and you know, I can't, you, I can't play with your cards. I got to play with the ones that I've been dealt, and these are the cards that I've been dealt. Matt Dunnigan, who in 13 years as a CFL quarterback, sliced and diced defenses, put up that incredible 700 yards plus on one night, epitomized tough Matt Dunnigan. Football is is um, is a team sport. And it's difficult to uh, uh, to stand up here and, and and be singled out for myself. I am truly honored and privileged to be going into the hall, not only with these players up here, but knowing the people that have gone before us. Uh, it, it, it's overwhelming and, and it's mind boggling. But the, th the reason why I'm so, I think, flabbergasted and overwhelmed is, is because it's an interpretation of the way you play the game and how you present it, how you attack it and go out there and play. And to be singled out like this, it, it feels like it feels like you've put a stamp of approval on the way I play the game. And the reason why I play the game the way I do is because there's so many people in the audience and, and, and my coaches. It is amazing, folks how easy it is to understand why I'm here. I got great people around me. I love y'all. I love this league. I don't want to sit down because I don't want this night to end. But uh, I tell you, it feels good to be here. And all you guys that are aspiring to be here, hey, just take it one day at a time, one play at a time, and leave it out on the football field because that's the way it's meant to be played. Just kill the guy with the ball. The Canadian Football League, well, oh. For 23 years, you pour yourself into it, and you're passionate about it. You're passionate about the country and the people that you you touch and, and, and communicate with and and befriend. And to me, it's one of those scenarios where where it, it defines you. And, and and every day you go out there and you attack it. In my 14 years of playing in this wonderful league, I tried to make sure that every time I went out there. I was putting a stroke on that canvas that I could be proud of, and, and I'm telling you, that has not changed um, since, since I've retired, and, and last night was a culmination and a stamp of approval that I was doing it. My kids, um, I, I think they're looking at Dad differently today than they did yesterday, and um, as well as the game of football and, um, and what the Canadian Football League's all about, and hopefully it'll inspire them maybe to go out there and, and attack life like I attack the football field. Dunnigan went on to say that being an Edmonton Eskimo isn't a sometimes thing, it's an all the time thing. An Edmonton Eskimo represents every player who ever played for the green and gold each and every time he takes to the field, as well as generations of loyal fans and the city itself. If you don't want to win and build a dynasty, then this isn't the team for you. Once an Eskimo, always an Eskimo. Coaching is in me. 14 years of being a quarterback and learning from the best that I had the good fortune to do. You understand what it takes to lead. And 
you really don't settle for any other position other than being able to audibilize the line of scrimmage and control the football and to dictate what's going on and the tempo and the pace and matchups and things of that nature. So I was basically a coach for 14 years when I played. Um, didn't know it, but you know, certainly, certainly felt like I could lead. Just led by example and worked hard. And over the course of uh, um, my career and the good fortune that I had, I learned from some tremendous individuals. I was just tremendously fortunate to be around so many great leaders. And being a quarterback, you had special relationships with those people. And when you're sitting there making personnel decisions, along with your head coach and general manager about people and whatnot, and you're involved in those meetings on a regular basis, you learn something about the game, let alone how to play it. I miss him playing. I watch football games now, and there's there's no tougher player than he was. And I loved watching him play, and I, I loved him in that uniform. <laughs> it was hard to watch him out of it. Winning is, an, is a pretty simple formula, and um, you got to have uh, the right people in the right places, and quality people that certainly are passionate about what they do. Uh, that won't change their colors, come hell or high water, will continue to be the same people day in, day out, through good times and bad. And uh, I understand that. There's nothing like being involved with an organization, front office, ticket office, personnel, coaches, players, equipment staff, medical staff. Everybody working to get everybody working in the same direction and have and see it come together. Um, and you know, that, that's a passion, and that's and that's something that uh, I, I believe um, is in the cards. And, um, and I'm waiting to get dealt that hand. <laughs>